here in my hands. All right, hey y'all. Um, this is just going to be a quick video on uh, different accessories that you would use to mount lavaliers uh, onto Talon. Um, there's a couple of different things that I find handy and that normally come with the microphones, but some things that you may have to purchase on your own that you may not always think about. Uh, and these are things that always exist in, in my kit. Uh, in fact, I, I even have these little kits put together, which most of the time have most of my items in them. And I find that that works pretty well for the most part. Um, in addition to that, I'll normally have a little a little pouch that always goes with me that has a couple of extra accessories in it as well. Uh, so let's let's start with just one of these. I have two different types of lavaliers that I brought here for you guys, um, and we'll we'll explain that uh, in a little bit. But let's just start with our first one here. This is the pretty ubiquitous Cos 11D. Uh, you'll see it on a lot of film sets, um, and you'll you'll see it in TV and stuff. I have a I have a little game that I play where I try to spot the microphone. And normally it's one of these when I spot it. Um, sometimes a smaller DPA or countryman. Uh, but these are these are pretty widely used. They're easy to hide. Um, and they sound pretty decent as well. So there's a couple of accessories that'll come with this that make it easier to mount. Uh, one of them is this little pop filter grill thing that you have here. That's normally used in conjunction with our little clip right here. Now this has a nice little clamp right here that'll clamp down onto the microphone, um, and the, the mic itself has a little groove in there, so this will go in like that. And then your little pop filter will go on the top like that. Um, and this is pretty much what you use most of the time for uh, broadcast or interview scenarios when you're going to be uh, just hiding this right on the outside of somebody's shirt. Uh, and it's it's there in plain view. Uh, a lot of times that's that's great, works just fine. Uh, you'll see this microphone on John Oliver or Trevor Noah. Um, I swear I saw John Oliver using a tram, but I know definitely on the Daily Show they'll they'll use one of these. Um, and that's that's their main source uh, with live studio audience. So this is big in the world of TV documentaries, interviews, um, and this particular clip I love because it's got this little part right here. Your cable just sits snugly in there. Um, you got a little nice string relief built into this because you don't want to tug on this end. Uh, anytime these microphones break, they normally break right here around the connection, and it's a pain in the butt to fix. So what happens if you're not doing a broadcast situation uh, or interview for, for a documentary? Uh, you're going to want to hide these microphones. Uh, so what you'll do a lot of times in those scenarios is this comes off, and you'll see I've got this nice little... Um, plastic thing. Uh, there are different ones that come with these microphones. Uh, they're a little bit bigger. Uh, this original plastic container came with a DPA microphone, and they had a couple of them that I grabbed for free the last time I was at Gotham Sound uh, to make these little kits, and I, I just leave my, my microphone and a couple of accessories in there. Um, another good way to, to hide this, if you're just going to hide it, um, is with this little rubber thing. These normally come with COS 11s. It's called an RM11. Um, and it's a little, it's a little mount for it. Um, where most of the time you'll stick it in here like this, poke this little end out here, because the more you cover this actual capsule, uh, the more your sound will sound muffled like this, and that's not fun. We don't want that. Uh, so you'll, you'll leave your microphone exposed a little bit as, as much as you can. If you have to tuck it in and hide it, you can do that as well. And... This works nicely in conjunction with, let me break out a couple of these. These little Rycote stickies. Um, and a lot of times you'll have to buy these separately. Uh, they won't come with your rentals or anything like that. You gotta own it yourself. Uh, and they go right on the back here like that. They're double-sided. Peel that off and you can stick it uh, under somebody's shirt, or where you see these most often is in between two layers of a button-down shirt. Um, you can you can even see this sometimes in, in TV um, in some movies where if somebody turns to the side the right way and you shoot right up in between those two layers of, of the button-down shirt, you'll actually see one of these tucked in there uh, like that. But for the most part, this hides out pretty nice. Now, this isn't always the best solution, so I've got a couple of other things that I use as well. Um, you'll see... 
these. There's these little soft foamies. Um, as well as, oh, are those different? Yeah, they are. I've got a couple of these here because I have I have the old ones as well. Um, and I'll show you what they look like. Uh, so these are called Hush Labs. Um, and what this will do is fit around your microphone. Like this, you kind of have to squeeze it in there. And then you've got a nice little soft mount shock mount that absorbs any sort of impact, anything that's that's rustling up against this. And a lot of times this is a great way to, to mount your microphones in conjunction with, with a little bit of uh, tape or, or moleskin if you have that. Um, more often than not, you'll actually see a lot of these uh, tucked in the knot of a tie in TV or movies. Um, and they'll, they'll face it downwards, it'll be tucked right in that knot. I've got some other options here. Uh, Ursa makes these. They're just like the the Hush Labs, but they're they're a little bit flatter, so you can hide them under things a little easier. Uh, I like these for certain situations as well. Um, I'm just sort of in between products right now. I don't think one's either really better than the other right now. I just there was the Ursa ones available, and they were a little flatter, and I wanted to try those the last time I was at the store. And that's nice to use as well. We've got this little critter here. I call it a little critter because it kind of looks like a little critter. Um, these can be used, um, again, in, in conjunction with these stickies. And in certain situations, this works great for you. You stick your, your little microphone in here like this. I'm always careful with the capsule itself. I never like it being too buried in here. Um, and then I'll carefully stick this little mount over here. You can really bury that in there if you want. Um, I like to always leave a little bit of the capsule exposed. Um, I find that anything that you bury it under is kind of problematic sometimes, especially uh, even with these little stickies. If you really bury it up against the sticky, it can it can sometimes get a little bit of sound of that that sticky itself. Um, and that's I don't always I don't always dig that. Um, and this makes a nice little mount too. Uh, put this up against somebody's chest or a piece of their clothing, and this this soft furry right here will prevent any any noise from the the clothing rubbing up against it, uh, and that'll that'll sound pretty good. This also acts as a little bit of a windscreen as well for your your lavalier uh, if you need that. Um, it'll it'll help. Let's take this away, and I'm going to show you sort of. Our, our final thing that I have here, um, which is this, this, this moleskin. Um, this is, this is specialized moleskin called Ursa Tape. I tend to use it. Um, i I really favor this lately. Uh, you can use normal moleskin. It works just as fine. Um, it's a little bit harder to find at most pharmacies these days. Uh, I used to tell people, oh, just go to buy go to your CVS, Walgreens, buy a roll of moleskin. Um, they don't always have that. Uh, moleskin is is traditionally what you would use to treat a blister. Um, it's a it's a first aid item, um, and now they have these gel bandages uh, that that they seem to push a lot. And I've for some reason I found it increasingly hard to find moleskin at the pharmacy. Uh, you can, however, order normal moleskin online on Amazon, uh, and that'll work just as fine. This stuff's a little bit more expensive, uh, but I like it for its purpose. Um, for me, it's it's a little easier to work with and faster to work with than normal moleskin. Um, and it's got these nice little lines on it, which make it easy uh, to cut stuff up. Normally, I actually have a bunch of pre-cut strips of this. Um, and one of the better tools that you can use for cutting this, I found, is these right here. And these are a set of, these are a small version. These are trauma shears. Um, and they're designed for, for first aid, uh, for, for cutting through people's clothing to get to uh, traumatic injuries uh, to treat them fast. Um, they happen to be very good at cutting through fabric, and that's what, what this is. So I'll take a little bit of this, and we'll cut this up. I have a bigger set of these that I normally use, but these were sort of right next to me in the, the first aid kit at home. So I snatched them. And I normally cut these into strips like this. Uh, the lines will help you kind of cut it. Or normally I 
when I when I pull it out on the roll, I count one, two, three, four, five, cut it long, and then cut cut these in half. And then I'll leave these in my little. Uh, I've got a little a little tool pouch that normally sits on my belt, um, and I'll use these when I go to mic people up because uh, I use these to actually make a little mount for people that I find works uh, really great in a lot of different scenarios. Um, let me show you how to make that right now. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to cut about two of these squares wide. Uh, it comes out to roughly about an inch. And I'm going to cut another one. And wait for that plane to go over. And then I'm going to cut another one of these. And the way I'll use this is to, to make a classic little sandwich. Where I'm going to take my microphone, put it right on top of one of these. Again, leaving that end just exposed a little bit. You don't want anything to touch it, really. And then I'm going to sandwich this together here like that. So let me pull one of these off. Sometimes it's easier to start with this end. Find it right in the middle there. And then that can sit nicely on here. And then you can use this mount as, as a nice little sandwich to, to stick on people. And you've got a little bit more surface area for your adhesive here, where this will stick on somebody's chest nicely. Or even uh, this can replace your your RM11 uh, for use in between uh, those layers of clothing on a button-down shirt. Um, and what's nice about this moleskin is it's nice and soft and stuff will just sort of rub across it nicely. So a lot of times uh, it'll help you deal with any sort of clothing rustle noise. Um, now let me undo this and show you one of my, my more favorite things to do with this that I've been using a little bit more recently. Uh, another mount that I like to make is is using a little bit more of this tape uh, moleskin, where you'll you'll give yourself a little bit more. I find surface area uh, tends to be the key to getting your your stuff to stick. Uh, the more surface area you have grabbing onto whatever you're using, uh, the better. Uh, the adhesives that we use tend to not be the strongest adhesives in the world because um, they're they're normally made to be a little bit more sensitive for people's skin. Um, that's another nice bonus about this Ursa tape. I think it's hypoallergenic. Um, which makes it nicer because a lot of times you're sticking on people's skin and this is something that's nice to have anytime you're sticking stuff to people's skin is these alcohol wipes and what these will do is you'll use one of these beforehand wipe down somebody's skin a little bit to get rid of any oils or gunk or dirt that might be there uh, and let it dry um, that makes your your adhesives stick a little bit nicer uh, and, and everybody has different skin. Um, I found doing this. Some some people have very dry skin. Some people have very oily skin. Uh, that'll be hard to get adhesives to stick to. Um, so it's nice to have a couple of different tools in your in your tool belt, if you will, uh, to be able to to deal with those different situations. So here's this little mount that I like to make. I'll use one of these stickies. Oh, I gotta use another one. Ruined that other one using it. And I'll stick this right in the center here. Like that. And then I'll take my microphone, stick it right up on the sticky like that, and I'll leave that head exposed just a tiny bit. I like giving myself that space. You notice there's a bit of a gap between the capsule of the microphone and the back of this right here. It's kind of important. And then I'll actually just take one of these little furries, place it right over here like that. And when I do this, I'm, I'm actually, a lot of times I'm a little bit happier leaving the, the head of this exposed. Um, and this right here has been one of my favorite mounts for just uh, sticking the microphone to people's chest. Uh, I found that if you if you have the space, you can do it. A lot of times with with people with flatter chests, you can't get away with this much material under there, and you'll have to just do the sandwich that I just showed you earlier. Uh, but a lot of times if somebody has um, a little bit more muscle in their chest or more going on there, you have a nice little place to hide this in. Um, and what this this furry does is prevent 
noise from from their clothing rubbing up against this. I found that even even on people who have uh, flatter chests, um, even if their their t-shirt is kind of close to this, uh, it won't really rub up against it and make a ton of noise. These work pretty well at at dealing with that rustle noise. And because this is a little sort of wider and softer, uh, it doesn't really print against the shirt as much as sort of a smaller, tighter mount that's that's harder would um, when it prints up against the shirt. Uh, so you can see it. And this works nicely. And then you, you've you got a nice little mount ready to go. Um, if I know I'm going to be mounting a microphone on somebody like this, I'll, I'll rig this up beforehand. And then when I go over to the actor, uh, this is very easy to place on them where I just sort of you rip your, your tape off there. And you've got a bunch of the surface area there too. And then I'll have a couple extra strips of this to um, strain relief the cable uh, along their body and make it go where I want it to go. Uh, a couple other things that you'll see. Uh, this transport tape right here. Um, this is popular. Anybody who's familiar with music theater uh, has probably had this used multiple times. To get microphones to stick along their skin. Uh, this stuff can be a little aggressive. Um, it's again, this is hypoallergenic and it's designed to stick on people even when they when they sweat. Uh, one of the downsides of this though is it really sticks to people's skin after a long day. You'll you'll pull this off and it'll it'll leave a mar mark where it is. Um, and I find this this mole skin tends to be a little bit more gentle on people's skin, and it comes in skin tones as well. Uh, I have this um, I really only have this this one little tan, and then I have one that's that's black uh, for for darker skin tones. There isn't too much in between. I think they just have like a tan, black, and brown. This is kind of nice. It works to blend in. Sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of gaff tape on you. Um, I've got another gaff tape triangle video, um, but I'll do that. I'll do that now because sometimes you're in a pinch. You aren't always dealing with um, this little cost eleven that I have. So let me let me break this down real quick. So, the reason why I mentioned this gaff tape earlier, right here, is because we're not always using those cost 11. Sometimes we use one of these, um, a different type of microphone. This here is an ME2. Oh, <laughs> my label got covered up there with one of my little stickies. Um, and this is about the size of a lot of more consumer microphones. Um, these, in my opinion, this is an older ME2. They don't really make them like this anymore. This used to come with the Sennheiser G3s. Um, and I, I really like these compared to for, for budget microphones. Um, they're relatively cheap. Um, and they've got some, some nice features to them. They don't sound like the cost 11s. They aren't as easy to hide. Uh, but they get the job done. Now, something about the ME2s. Uh, that I like is this setup is very similar to the the cost 11 where you've got a little a little bit of fuzz that keeps sticking on there you've got a little pop filter that comes on here and then the clip that they have works very much the same way where you've got one of these this comes on like this stick your pop filter there you can have a nice look for your your interviews and stuff one of the problems with this microphone however um, is that it's a little chunkier, it's wider. A lot of these products that are meant to work with the COS 11s uh, and the DPA microphones and Countryman microphones, like this, this Hush Lab here, or even this little Foamy, um, or your RM11 mount, uh, this, this won't fit in this. And uh, you, can, you can do a couple of things to kind of make that work. Um, you can cut these open and try to like tape it around here. You can really work this and you might be able to get it to fit in there. Um, but it's, it's not fast and it's not efficient. Um, this is why I tend to favor this, this mole skin, um, and, and these little softies, because one of these will actually work with this pretty well. You can make that little sandwich that I made before, um, using the mole skin. Now, something that's very common, if you don't have all this equipment, let's say you're just taking out rental equipment, or maybe you're a student using school equipment, um, a good popular method is the gaff tape triangle. Um... So to do that, we're going to use our ye old roll of ubiquitous two-inch gaff tape. Pull a couple of inches off of here. Yeah, about four inches will do. You got two inches of gaff tape. You're going to split this in half the long way, so you have two one-inch strips. It's okay if one comes out a little bit bigger than the other. And then if you've ever... Well, I'm just going to stick this on me for now. If you've ever made 
a paper football or folded a flag, you're going to do that with this. We're going to take one corner, fold it down like this, like that. This doesn't have to be perfect, but making it sort of nice and tight works out nicely. It doesn't have to be too tight, but you don't want it to be super loose. Fold it down like that. Fold this over like that. And you'll do the same with another one as well. Fold it down. Go across. And then down. And take this little slack. Stick it there. And put my microphone right in here. Leaving that capsule exposed a little bit. If you bury it, it'll sound muffled like this. That's the sound of me putting my hand over the microphone. Um, and you've got a nice little mount that you can use. The tape's a little gummy, so it acts as a shock mount for your microphone. And you can stick this in between two layers of clothing pretty easily. Um, gaff tape isn't always the nicest to people's skin, um, but this, this works in a pinch if you have to stick this in between two layers of clothing. Uh, and it'll actually prevent the two layers of clothing from rubbing up against the microphone as well, because it's sticky on both sides. Uh, you do have to worry about it printing on the clothing on the outside, though, so you have to be careful about where you choose to put this. Um, let me wait for this phone to pass, and then we'll talk once more about these. One issue that I've noticed lately with a lot of the microphones that are sort of modeled after this ME2 are their design. Um, this is... This is nice because it's it's bigger than the cost 11. It's cheaper, um, but I can actually take the stuff off and make it nice and easy to hide for narrative productions. A lot of microphones that I'm seeing now that come with these budget kits, um, and even even the ones that come with the the new replacement for the ME2, uh, it might even still be called an ME2. But whatever whatever's coming with the the new Sennheiser kits these days, I've seen them on on lots of budget shoots and. Uh, in schools that, that I teach in, um, the microphones just don't really work that well for narrative because you're, you're dealing with something that's so much harder to hide. Uh, once I place this clip and this pop filter on here, it becomes a lot harder to hide. Um, and a lot of these microphones I'm seeing, um, sometimes this clip can't come off where this, this part right up here, this little pop filter, will be permanently attached. Um, and you can't remove it without sort of disassembling the microphone. And that makes it so that you can't really take the clip off. And the only thing you can do is sort of snake it down down here, down farther down the, the cable, or you have to sort of try to finagle it off of here like you would sort of getting a key ring off of something. Um, and it's, it's kind of a pain in the butt. And then once you're, once you're stuck with just this, and you can't remove this little pop filter from the front, um, this suddenly becomes a lot harder to hide. Um, and I'm seeing ones where they're... they're a lot more bulbous than this, and it it looks okay on the outside of somebody. Um, to be honest, compared to what I'm used to in the broadcast industry, either either a tram or a cost eleven, um, I think the more bulbous ones actually look kind of hideous and a little obtrusive. It doesn't look tight and neat. Um, I'm not a fan of that. Um, so just be aware of that if you're using rental equipment, because uh, because I really think that for narrative productions, um, short films. Uh, stuff where you're trying to hide the microphone that makes the job of hiding the microphone so much so much harder um, And hiding it's only only like one-third of the battle the other the other two-thirds of the battle is getting the darn thing to sound good While it's hidden on somebody and that that makes people's jobs so much harder. So just be aware of that um, and know what you're going into um, Just a my, my quick two cents. Uh, I might not even put that in the video, but that's the end of that uh, we're gonna have a Another video coming shortly after this, uh, which will um, talk about how we actually implement these and how we actually hide them on um, other people. Uh, I've got a couple of friends that I'm going to enlist in, in sort of helping to, to make that video because I need other bodies to demonstrate that. Um, but that'll be coming shortly and soon. Um, so just for now, hope you enjoy this. Um, come back in the future for a little bit more information.